What's going on everyone? Today we'll be going over the YPerm. So the YPerm algorithm seems quite long, but it's actually made up of a lot of common triggers that you guys probably already know. I'll go through the algorithm right now just to show you guys. So if you're interested in some tips to memorize the YPerm algorithm, I'll put the timestamp to that in the video right here. I'll also include a lot more timestamps in the video description, so feel free to check those out as well. So YPerms are usually quite easy to recognize, especially if you get it from this angle. So YPerms can be recognized by having both of these two by one bars. So we usually hold it so that one of the bars is on the front and the other one is on the right side. You'll notice that there's a single corner with opposite colors in between the two by one bars. So when you see this sort of pattern, that's when you know you have a Y perm. Now, unfortunately, Y perms are actually quite difficult to recognize from this angle. This is actually a Y perm, but it might be hard to tell from this angle. So usually if you have the Y perm at this angle on PLL, the best thing to do is actually just to move the U layer around because we usually start the Y perm from this angle anyway. So even if you move it around, you're most likely just setting up the Y perm to the correct position anyway. So you're not really wasting any moves for recognition. In this case, it's fine to ju just do U moves to recognize the Y perm, but this is one of the exceptions because the algorithm is done from this angle anyway. As I mentioned before, Y perms are actually quite easy to remember because there's a lot of common triggers in the algorithm. Even though it is a long algorithm, the common triggers make it very easy to remember. So probably the most difficult part to remember would actually be the first five moves because it's not really found in any other triggers, but the rest of the algorithm is definitely quite easy to remember. So the first five moves, I like to just remember how my hands move. Um, rather than remembering the physical moves because I think that's easier to remember. So I always remember that I start with my index finger on the F layer, which does the first F move, and then my right hand going up doing the R, and then U prime, R prime, U prime. So not too difficult to remember, but we'll take some time to get used to. The next four moves you should recognize if you've learnt the T perm or the J perm before. It's actually the, the first four moves of the J perm, or you can think of it as the last four moves of the T perm. So quite a common trigger, R, U, R prime, F prime. The next trigger you guys should definitely know by now, it is called the sexy move. It's just R, U, R prime, U prime. And then the final four moves, you may recognize it, you may not, but it's actually the sledgehammer move. So for those who know the sledgehammer, these last four moves will definitely be very familiar. Um, if you don't know what the sledgehammer is, you can think of it as inserting this F2 pair into this slot, but instead of inserting it the regular way, um, we wanna move the F2 pair straight into this slot like this. Then we wanna restore this cross piece by moving this F2 pair out of the way restoring this cross piece here and then moving the F12 pair back into its position. So that's the sledgehammer move and that's the end of the algorithm. So by breaking the algorithm up into these smaller triggers, it actually makes it a lot easier to remember. Even though these triggers are quite common, it might be difficult to put them together. So I'll go through the algorithm again quickly just to make sure you've got everything. So once again, the first five moves, I always like to remember how my hands move rather than the actual moves because there's not really a nice pattern to the moves. So I just try and remember how my fingers move. So starting off with the F, R, U prime, R prime, U prime. Then going into this common trigger, which of course is R, U, R prime, F prime, quite commonly used in other PLOs followed by the sexy move, which is a very common trigger that we all should know, and then followed by the sledgehammer, or you can think of it as inserting this F12 pair like this, and that's the algorithm. 
So the main finger trick to be aware of in this algorithm is this F prime push, which isn't actually used until the very last move of the algorithm. And the important thing about using this move, instead of doing it another way, such as using the index finger, is for example, I'll get to the end of the algorithm. You'll notice that if I do this F prime move, I don't have to regrip like this if I use my thumb. But instead, if I decided to have used my left index finger to do the F prime move like this, which I have seen some people do, you'll notice that when I get to the end of the algorithm, I'll have to regrip my left hand before I do the sledgehammer. And that regrip before the sledgehammer will definitely slow the algorithm down. You won't be able to do it as quickly as if you didn't regrip and just did that F prime finger trick instead. Also, another benefit of using that F prime finger trick is that when you get to the end of the algorithm, and just in case you did have an AUF, your hands are in the home grip, which means you can AUF both directions without a regrip. So that makes the AUF more efficient as well. On the other hand, if you have used your index finger to do this final F prime move, you'll notice that your hands, especially your left hand, won't be in a good position to do this U prime AUF. So you'll have to regrip if you had a U prime AUF. And of course, regripping just for AUF is definitely very inefficient. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Instead, I would recommend trying to finish your PLL in the home grip. That way, if you had an AUF, you could go either way, no problems at all. Also, this is just a side note. The Y perm algorithm is actually made up of two OLO algorithms. So the first half of the Y perm actually solves this particular OLO case. So this is known as the fish shape. And you can use the first half of the Y perm, which is the part in red, to solve this particular case. Also, the second half of the Y perm is well also an OLO case. So it's this particular T shape right here. So the part in blue actually solves this particular OLO case. So it would go something like this. So this is just a side note. So for those of you who have learnt the Y perm and you haven't learnt full OLO yet, well, learning this algorithm, you've already learnt two OLO cases, which is definitely a good head start for you guys in learning full OLO. AUFs for Y perm are actually quite easy to recognize. You can look at either one of these two by one bars. Both of them won't move after the PLO. I like to just stick to the front two by one bar because, well, since it's at the front, it'll be very easy to spot during a solve. So if this is matching the rest of the side, then you won't have to do an AUF after the solve. So in this case, we will not have an AUF. So here's another example of the Y perm. Once again, I'll recognize the AUF from these two by one bars here. Um, you'll notice that it actually belongs on this side, which means that I'll have to do a U move after PLO to actually solve the cube. I'll demonstrate that right now. So we'll do the algorithm and you'll notice that green ends up at the front. So as predicted, we needed to do a U move after the algorithm. All right, so that's it for the Y perm tutorial. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer all of them. Like the video if you learned something new. Please subscribe if you wanna see more similar videos like this. And also share these videos with people you may know who are currently learning PLO or who want to learn full PLO. It definitely helps grow the channel. I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.